A few months ago, I bought these for two reasons. Number one, they look supremely cool. And reason number two is the more important reason, speed. This video has come about because I have a question. How much faster is a disc wheel? More specifically, how much faster is this disc wheel? The one that I've chosen to spend my money on. I've now done a fair bit of testing with this disc wheel, which I'm going to go into later, but I'm a little bit worried. That reason being because it might just be the tires that are faster, but I'm gonna need your help later to go over some data. Let's see what I want to test these new wheels against, and these are my old wheels. These are the old wheels that came with the bike and they are a Vision SC 55 millimeters deep. So great all rounder wheel, but these are obviously a lot deeper. When I was racing on these, I was racing with a 25 mil. I've now got 28s on here because they've become a training wheel. Unfortunately, with the 28 mil tire, it does not fit the front wheel as well. The width of these rims are 27 mil wide, so the 28 blows out just above the outside and does not create a smooth airflow on the front here. I'm going to be comparing them, of course, to my new wheels here. On the rear, I have the Parkour's disc wheel, and on the front here, I have the Parkour's Chrono Max, a really deep 83 millimeter wheel. On the wheels here, I have fitted a 28 mil wide Continental GP5000 TTTR by far some of the fastest tires that you can buy. When fitted to these wheels, they do actually measure at 30 mil wide, but they fit really smoothly into the profile of the wheel. I actually asked Parkour's about this, whether a 25 would be faster than a 28, and I'm gonna get onto their response a little bit later. These are what I want to compare. Are these new wheels faster than my old wheels? Before I get into the data though, let's go right into the testing protocol so you know exactly what I've done. Let's start with the course that I used. The stretch of road was 4.16 kilometers long. It had an average gradient of a 1.2% decline, which just ended a grand total of 49 meters through the course. The road surface was rough, just like everywhere in Surrey, but it's the longest stretch of road with semi the least cars in Surrey. I don't think there's any road in Surrey without a million cars on it. Whilst I was there, I actually ended up testing the way back up the course as well. So I held the exact same time trial position as I was coming back up. The way that I chose to run the tests is I started with the original wheels. I then swapped out the rear for the disc. And then my third test was disc plus the deeper front wheel. I then repeated this three times and that way no wheel was done back to back. The reason I chose to test this way is to make sure that I split the wheels up and that should reduce the impact of any changes in the wind throughout the day. Here are some of the variables that I try to my best to keep the same. The first one is of course body position. I'm pretty comfortable on my TT bike, so I actually found it quite easy to hold the exact same position the whole way through. The next thing I kept the same was the entry speed into the test area. Every single time I started, I kept it at 35 kilometers an hour before I hit that marker. When it comes to the tires, because they're different tires and measure at different sizes, I decided to keep the same skin pressure of the tire. So that means for the faster GP5000s here, I had it at 71 PSI. And then for the Schwalbe's, because they measured a bit narrower, 28 mil rather than 30 millimeters, they had a tire pressure of 79 PSI. Both of these tires are set up tubeless, so there should be no difference there. On the downhill faster section, I decided to hold 225 watts. This was an easy enough power that I could maintain the same body position for every single run. As you can see here from the Strava data, I think I did a pretty damn good job of holding it. On the return journey, I held 175 watts just for some nice easy recovery. And this also let me test all wheel sets at a lower speed on an uphill as well. There were some cars that passed me on certain runs, some overtaking me, some coming the other way. Unfortunately, this is a variable that I just can't remove as much as I would like to remove all the cars in Surrey. Okay, here's the bit you've been waiting for, the data. With my data collection, I compared my manual start and stop points with the Strava segment that I created, and they both correlated very, very strongly with each other. So I just decided to use the Strava data here. 
Here is that data and I've handily put it into a spreadsheet for anyone to read. And I did all of this without any help from my girlfriend who is a chartered accountant. No help whatsoever. As we go over this, feel free to screenshot anything that you want to. And if I've messed anything up in the data, well, feel free to correct me if you're interested in sifting through data. Right, so if we start here, here is all of my raw data. You're welcome to screenshot that if you need to, but let's just move right into the fun stuff. So here, what I've chosen to do is extrapolate the data into longer time frames, so you, you can actually get a better feeling for how much time the wheels save. Let's start with the faster sections. So if we look at this section here, where I was doing 225 watts, for a classic UK 10 mile time trial, what we can see here is that the disc wheel itself would estimatingly save me about 21 seconds over that time. If I add the deeper wheel on the front, then it's gonna save me a grand total of 33 seconds. Going up to 40 kilometers, so your normal 25 mile time trial or an Olympic distance triathlon. Adding the disc wheel saved me 53 seconds over the event and adding the deep wheel as well saved me another 30 seconds going up to a minute and 23. As the events get longer and longer, here's where the savings really add up. Over a middle distance Ironman or triathlon, the disc wheel will save me just about two minutes, and then it will save me just over three minutes if I add the deep wheel on the front. Then finally, over the full Ironman distance, over 180 kilometers, having a disc wheel will save me four minutes, and having the deep wheel on the front will save me a further two minutes, 15 seconds, going to six minutes in total. The testing of this data is done at faster speeds. So for most of these runs, I was averaging around 44 to 46 kilometers an hour. Let's see what happens at a much slower speed. If we decide that we want to look at the right side here, so this is the return journey, same distance, but it was all uphill and I was doing much less power, only 175 watts the deeper front wheel on the bike when going uphill seems to be slower than the shallower front wheel. The disc on the other hand, even at these slow speeds on my testing, does seem to give a massive, massive advantage still. Here is actually where I need your help though. I know some of you are a lot smarter than me out there and a lot better at spreadsheets, and I want to work out how many watts I'm saving from the shallower wheel set to the disc wheel, to the disc wheel plus the front wheel. So if any of you out there have those spreadsheets, please hit me up. If I do get the help, I will post it down in the description below this video. I do think there is another thing to account in this data as well, and that is the speed or rolling resistance differences between the Continentals and the Schwalbe's. If we look on bicycle rolling resistance here, we can see that per tire, the Continental is rolling at 7.1 watts and the Schwalbe is rolling at 7.5 watts. So over the two tires, there should be about a 0.8 watt difference. I was a little worried at first that the increase in speed I was getting was going to be just from this, but I think a small 0.8 watt difference wouldn't equate to like a six minute saving over 180 kilometers. If this video does well and you're interested, what I would love to see is if I fit this front wheel with 25 millimeter tire rather than a 28. That should give you a narrower area on your frontal profile and theoretically should make you faster. I do know for a fact that on these wheels, a 25 measures at a 27 mil wide, but that's still two millimeters narrower than what we're running here. I did in fact ask Parkours if they have any test data on this themselves, and here's what they had to say. We tested the Think Wider Aero range with the equivalent 25 millimeter GP5000 as part of the final validation process. None of the wheels showed any advantage in terms of aero performance when taking over a weighted average yaw sweep. What I mean by this is when we take a real world yaw data and use it to translate wind tunnel data taken at a fixed yaw angle increments, we don't see any benefit at all. The only simulation where we do see a tangible benefit of the narrower tire is at zero degrees yaw. Whew. So guys, here's what I learned from this. My wheels are actually faster and I'm glad I bought them. And when I do my first full distance Ironman next year, I should be around four to six minutes faster through the bike lane. The next thing that I learned is that testing is super hard to do, especially here around Surrey. 
I did it a grand total of 13 runs. I only needed nine, but I had to throw so many away because cars would pull out in front of you and then slow down to take the next turning. It was very infuriating. Well, everyone, if you found this test data at least a little bit useful, please hit that like button for me. Or if you want to see a video on the 21 of the best time trial upgrades that you can do in order, then it's gonna pop up on the screen here. I've been Jason, this has been Cycling Unboxed. I'll see you in the next video.